Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Tonight is a real ghost story. It's the story about Roy. I moved into my house nearly eight years ago and within about a couple of weeks of moving in, my neighbour came out the back of his yard. His house is rectangular this way. My house is rectangular that way. So we're on a corner. So his house is on the corner. So his front yard is around here. My front yard is over here. So when I come outside my backyard, I'm actually going to his backyard. From my back door to his back door was about 15 feet with a fence between the two. So he came out his backyard when I was in my backyard and I said, hello, my name's Linda, I'm new to the area. As we sort of do, you know, you pick your neighbours who you do and you don't talk to. He was an old man in his 80s and it became apparent by our conversations that he was actually quite lonely um, and he was also a very quiet and shy old man. I drove him to the shops a few times. I drove him up to the hospital a few times when he was having um, stuff done at the hospital. So I actually went into his house a few times and had a chat with him in there. So he was just a lovely old man. Then I woke up one morning and it was dark and I just had this feeling, go outside, Linda. So I went out into my backyard and all these lights were on, um, which was highly unusual at 10 o'clock at night because Roy used to go to bed um, about 8.30 and about six o'clock at night, he would make his dinner in the kitchen, which I could see because his back, his kitchen window was next to his back door, and which was right near my back door. Okay, so I'd see him in the kitchen every night, cooking his dinner at about six o'clock, and then he'd go into his lounge room and sit there at about six thirty and watch TV for about two hours before going to bed. So for me to wake up was highly unusual this night and for me to actually go out into the backyard was also extremely not normal. So I looked over and I saw all the lights on in his back in his house. Didn't really think about it much but the next day I found out Roy had passed away and the lights were because the paramedics and the police were there. So all up, I knew Roy for about two to three years after I moved in here. Three days after Roy died, I was in bed and I woke up and there's Roy standing at the foot of my bed, still wearing the familiar clothes that he wore every day. I sat up in bed totally um, unprepared to see him which some people would interpret as a fear or being scared of paranormal so I sat up because I was obviously unprepared to see him but as soon as I recognized that it was him I said hey Roy how are you and he said I'm fine I want to actually know if you're okay you know, what a lovely old man, yeah? He, come, he spent all that energy to come through to ask me if I was okay. And I said, Roy, you know, I, if I'd known what was going on, I would have come over that night. You know, I was a first aid trainer for years. I sort of know, you know, how to use a phone and look after someone until paramedics turn up. And he said, it doesn't matter because it was inevitable. So I've thought about those words over the years. It was inevitable. He knew that his passing was going to be at that point. So what's happened now over the past five years? 
It wasn't long after Roy appeared at my bed that I was sitting in my living room listening to the TV and I could hear saucepans hitting each other coming in the direction of his house. So I'd go outside and sure enough a light was on in his house. But because of the windows you can see there's no one in there. And also at this point I thought, how did the light turn on? Huh. A few weeks later, I had a party here. There would have been 15 people in my house. We were all outside. Pardon me. And there's a man in the backyard smoking. And he looks over Roy's fence. And he says, hey, Linda, Roy's TV is on. Huh? What? So we all come to the fence and we all saw Roy's TV was turned on. So a few of us went over to his house to make sure everything was all right, that there wasn't squatters in there, because all this furniture was still in the house. So four of us went over. What we did that night, we went around, because his house is here, remember my house is here? So we let out my front door, we walked around the corner to Roy's house here and we came around and then we walked down the side of his house came around the back where my house is and we were looking through his back fence um, the back windows there was absolutely no one inside his house all the doors were shut and locked but we checked the fuse box inside the fuse box there was no fuses what all the fuses were gone. The box was empty. How the hell did that work? How the hell did that work? How was the TV on? How were lights turning on when there's no fuses in the electricity box? So five years I've lived next door to Roy five years I've seen some weird things come in from Roy's house at one point there a few squatters moved in they actually kicked in the back door and they decided to move in for a while I wonder what made them leave <laughs> but one day I had my neighbour over for a coffee she knew Roy as well and while we're at the back, we looked up over the fence and sure enough, his back door was open. So I yelled out, hey, who's in there? Blah, 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 to see if it was a squatter. So my neighbour, she said, actually, where Roy lives, I live here. She lived across the road in the house across the road. OK, so she said, how about we go over and we close the door? So. Roy had his clothesline out the back and there were still clothes on the clothesline. So we walked around the street and we came around the back of his house and we used an old rag to secure the door. So the door couldn't open, you know, because there's wild cats and other animals. Um, if it rained, water could get in there, etc. So it's good to close the door, right? So... We left the building and came back around Roy's house and we came back into my house and my neighbour said, uh, you know, it's time for me to go home. I'm going home now. So she went back to her house across the road and I came back into my house and I thought I'll go back out the back because we'd been drinking coffee. I'll go out and get the cups and take them to the sink. So as I'm in my backyard, my phone rang. Sure enough, it came up, no caller ID. So I've answered it and I said, hello, this is Linda. And then I hear a very familiar old man's voice and he says, Linda. And I said, Roy, because I recognised his voice. How are you? I said. And Roy said, I'm fine, but I just wanted to know if you are still here. Are you still here? And I said, oh, honey, sorry. I was just at your house, but I've come back to my house now. Is everything okay? 
And he said, yes, everything's fine. I've got to go now. And he hung up. So I sat there and I thought, am I still here? Because he was ringing from his house where I just was. So about a year ago, the house got sold finally because it was in um, what we call here in Australia, it sat in probate, which is when Roy did not have a will. So it was in the hands of lawyers. <clears throat> now trying to find out who could have been a possible heir to the house. So it sat there for a good four or five years. So then a lawyer came and I spoke to the lawyer the day because they were in the backyard, which is, you know, only feet from where I sit. So I said, oh, hello, my name's Linda, is everything okay? And I say, oh, yes, we're a lawyer dealing with the house, blah, blah, blah. Um, they got rid of all the furniture and um, they said, oh, do you want some of the furniture? Because it's all going to the tip. And I said, oh, yes, please. And they said, okay, well, the furniture guy's coming over tomorrow. Ask him what you want when you see him boy did I just sit there with my ears open so when I saw the guys turn up the, from the removalist truck I said hey um the lawyer said I could take what I want and they said oh yeah what do you want so I actually got Roy's handmade red tiled coffee table beautiful coffee table I got some bookcases and a couple of tables Roy had actually made all these tables himself so I, I did some honor there to him you know, being respectful to him and the artistry work that he did using carpentry skills. So I've still got Roy's furniture here. Um, so then it went to market. <clears throat> they had an open house and I went around to the open house. And I spoke to the real estate and I said, do you have to legally disclose if someone has died in the house? Because Roy is still in this house. She went, oh, 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 um, no, we don't, unless they ask. That's the law here in Australia. Unless we ask if the house had a deceased estate or someone died in the house, they, they're not, they don't have to tell. So the house got sold and the man didn't want to live here. He uses it as an investment property. So <clears throat> about three months later, renovators started coming in, painters, other tradesmen to do plumbing etc I get this really weird phone call one day from the real estate <laughs> she said can you tell me what's going on with the house <clears throat> and I said what do you mean <clears throat> and she said well four of my tradespersons have now said that they will never go back to that house again and I said to her what do you mean she said well we had a painter he brought in all these bottles um the you know the big tins of paint he had the whole house ready the next day to paint when he came in the next day all the paint bottles had their lids off and they were all tipped out onto the floor there was paint all over the floor she said it was like someone didn't want the walls painted. Huh, wonder who that was. <laughs> she said a carpenter came in and he was in the bedrooms, in the cupboards, and in the cupboards there's all this shelving. So what his job was, was he was taking out all the shelving to replace with new shelves. So he took out all the, the old ones and he put them on the floor and the next day he was coming back with the new shelves to install. And when he came back the next day, all the old shelves were back in the cupboard. <laughs> Gotta love what ghosts can do, can't we? So one day this lady mowing the yard turns up. <laughs> So it was quite warm the day. So I stuck my head over the fence and I said, oh, hi, darling, are you okay? Would you like some water? Because I used to do, teach first aid, you know, hydrate yourself while it's hot day while you're mowing the yard. She said, oh, it's all right. I don't plan to be here long. And I said, oh, okay. 
And I said, well, you know, there is, there's a tap inside the house if you need anything, you know, wash your hands or whatever. She said, oh, no, I won't be going into the house because I know what happens if anyone goes inside the house. <laughs> so now the plot thickens a little bit more because the random mowing lady won't even go inside Roy's house. So last November, we got new tenants moved in. <laughs> it was about two weeks later after they moved in. The lady there, she was in the back doorway. And I was outside doing stuff in my backyard and she said, Oh, good day. I said, Hi, how are you? She said, um, Funny things are happening in this house. I said, Really? Tell me a story. She said, Her son went into one of the bedrooms with his box of clothes, etc., to unpack because they're living there now. Came outside. To do something went back into his bedroom that he was unpacking and there's the box full of all his stuff again <laughs> so Roy's packing what he's unpacking so they can move out I can imagine Roy would highly disagree with my neighbors I don't want to disclose what they do you know they're private but let's just say Roy was a very quiet gentle type of man and what they're doing in there, there has been police involvement and other things going on. <laughs> and I just think Roy would hate it in there. So why does he stay? Let's talk about why does Roy stay? We've got to look at the history of his house to understand why he stays. Roy bought that house and his wife moved in there with him and as soon as they bought it they did a lot of things to it they put in their own carpet they painted the walls installed doors changed things around to their liking so him and his wife have put their energy into that house i call that energetic connection what we do when we connect to something energetically his wife passed away back in the 80s so that was like 40 odd years ago from now when she, when she died and there's a good chance that she may have died in the house so Roy has lived there now since oh because he's still there <laughs> but living there uh, yeah we have to disagree with that one but you know, he was there by himself for about 30 odd years. Very self-sufficient, quiet, gentle man. It was his house. He put his heart and soul into that house. He knew everything about that house because he'd lived there alone. And he ultimately died there. So as a ghost, because he did not go to heaven, he's not a spirit, he is a ghost let's talk about some things of why he stays and what he does one I know that he can still move around the saucepans he can turn on lights he can turn on the t um, TV how does he do that when there's no fuses in the box <sighs> this is going to be a question that we do not yet have the answers to but once we understand energetic connection energy is electricity they can manipulate energetic electric devices and that's how he rang me even though he has no phone no internet service no phone service and doesn't have fingers to press the buttons to ring my phone number from the contact list how did he ring me is a big question that we just do not yet have the answers to guys but the fact is he did after that phone call that day I actually rang my neighbor and I said you won't believe it Roy just rang me 
she ran back here and I showed her my phone log. My phone log is in the Roy story that's in my ghost book that you can find on Lulu. But it's not there just yet at the time of reading this, okay? Because I'm still updating it at this point. So I will do a video when my boat, when my um, ghost book comes out, okay? Yeah, just not yet, okay? So I've got a photo of Roy's house with my house to show the distance between our two. And I've also got the photo of my phone showing the call log where it says no caller ID and we spoke for 15, 16 minutes that day when he rang me. So how does he come and visit me? That's the easy part because we had that connection because I met him. Okay, that L um, energetic connection. Okay, he knows the house, he knows this house because he's lived next door to my house now for 45, 50 years, right, since it was built. So he's got that energetic connection. He also knows the back of his house, back and front, without his eyes being open. Okay, so the big question here is why does he stay? Why does he stay for? Why doesn't he go into the white light? Because he would have seen the white light. Why did he prefer to stay here? Pardon me. We've got to remember here, guys, in this one life that we're now living, we're not privy to what is heaven. We're not privy to the information of what it's like there. Unless, like me, you've died and you've gone there. We're not privy here to what our soul's intentions are. We don't know our life lessons. We don't know our life contracts. We don't know how many other lives we've had. We don't know but kiss. All we know is what we live in this lifetime. I think I've given a little hint because Roy was a very shy, very quiet man. I believe Roy stays because he simply likes being who he was. He liked his privacy. He liked the fact that he could just make his dinner, sit down in his comfy chair and watch TV every night. He liked the fact that he didn't get many visitors. He liked the fact that he had someone that he could rely on who would drive him to the shops every now and again. He liked the fact that he was inside that house. So why would he want to leave it for? It's going to be interesting when these neighbours leave to see if he's still there. Or whether during the time that these neighbours are living in his house whether he has finally wanted to move on. Because the big thing here with him being a ghost is A, he knows he's dead because he told me three days after he died when he was standing at the foot of my bed. So he knows that he's died. He knows that he can go to heaven if he wishes. So it'll be interesting to see if his wishes are still to stay in this house when other people are now living there also. So that's the story of Roy, guys. He was a lovely man. You know, I can still remember his smell because he used to smoke like a pie cart. <laughs> you know, it's um, beautiful to have our memories, yes. But at the end of the day, he was still living out his memories. Hope you like the story. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.